Hey everyone and welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for joining me. In today's video, I'm gonna be showing you how you can make your very own photo cushion with your domestic sewing machine. Before we get started, if you're new here, then please, please drop a subscribe if you're interested in embroidery or running a business. I'd really appreciate it. And please give this video a thumbs up if you enjoy it. If you have any questions for me or you don't really understand a certain part, don't be afraid. I'd love to answer any questions or comments that you may have. If you haven't already, as well please go and check out my website where I have lots of different designs to choose from that you can customize yourself and pick your colors So today we are going to be making a 40 centimeter by 40 centimeter cushion cover. Now you don't have to use that size. It's just a size that I like to do because I tend to work A4. So I'm going to show you what you're going to need. This is one of the main things is a domestic sewing machine. You can do this on a digital embroidery machine, but maybe I'll do another tutorial for that later. It's a very different process. So I use a Janome CMX30 and I have the ability to put my feed dogs down, which are these little zigzags zag things here which basically moves the fabric onwards meaning that you can sew in a straight line but when they're down it means that you can move the fabric in any direction which is what we need you will need one of these free motion darning foots that allows you to kind of do the type of freehand sewing that we're aiming to do today this one here is an actual Janome foot which is the same make as my machine as you can see that just kind of works a bit better but there is also these type um this is a metal one i got it on ebay for only about six pounds so i recommend if you're really new to it maybe you just buy one of these first um, and then if you're interested in learning more you can get one of these um, which suits your machine a bit more these are all the things that we're going to be using today this is the cushion cover itself that i'm going to be sewing on i really recommend if you're doing this to use a woven fabric because it just takes the embroidery a lot better and you don't have to put interfacing on the back so it's just a bit faster but really you can use any material you can even make your own cushion if you want to so today we're going to create the drawing using tracing paper and a pencil you can obviously just draw anything yourself and you can use regular paper like printer paper cartridge paper i just think tracing paper is a bit easier to do the drawing from and it also is a bit easier to tear out you're going to need some masking tape for your drawing you're going to need some pins for eventually pinning your drawing onto the cushion cover um, i'll need a label but you don't need one of those and of course you'll need your embroidery thread and a couple of bobbins the thread we're using on the top of the machine to the bottom oh and i forgot to add you're going to need an embroidery hoop i prefer wooden ones personally because i think you can get the fabric really nice and tight you could try without an embroidery hoop but trust me it's going to be a lot easier if you have one of these so i think that's everything now i'm going to take you through the process step by step to try and make it as easy as possible to understand so without further ado let's get started Step number one to making your own photo cushion cover is to prepare your artwork. Now, for this video, this customer has agreed to letting me film the process whilst I make the order. Um, it's for one of her friends. She wants me to create a line drawing of this image and then embroider it onto a cushion cover for her friend's birthday. There's two ways that you could do this. Option one is to print it out and then you could trace it off there. Or if you're confident with your drawing skills, you could draw directly onto paper or directly onto the cushion itself with a fabric marker but I want this to be an easy tutorial um, and if you're like me you might not be amazing at drawing and also I just want to make it look exactly like the picture as possible so we could print it out on the computer and then trace that image but I don't know about you but I don't really like waste and I don't want to waste a piece of paper and I don't want to waste all the ink that the printer uses. So what I sometimes do is trace directly off my laptop screen. Now, this is what I do, and I advise you to be very careful when you do this, and please don't press too hard because I do not want to be held responsible for people's laptop screens getting cracked or broken. Kind of a do it at your own risk thing. As long as you draw gently, you should be fine. Just don't go pressing really hard on your screen because it's obviously not going to be good for it. Let's get started with that. So for this step, you're only going to need a few things. You need a piece of paper, ideally tracing paper, but it could work on other cartridge paper or printer paper 
or something thin. You're gonna need some kind of tape. I think masking tape is best because you can tear it away after without it ripping. If you don't have masking tape, sellotape will do. Just be careful you don't rip away the paper. Third thing is a pencil. Now I really recommend these kind of, I don't know what they're called, clicky pencils, just because you can get a really fine line with the point there. If you're using a regular pencil, just make sure it's really sharp. So here's the image I'm gonna be embroidering. As I said, you can either print this image out and then trace from the printed piece of paper. Or if you're like me and you want to not waste ink or paper, you can turn your laptop gently on its side and you can place your tracing paper over the screen. Then you wanna kind of make the image itself a bit bigger so that it will fill the whole A4 space. So if you just zoom in and make sure that the whole image will get onto the tracing paper, so I'd say for me it's gonna be about there. Once your image is nicely lined up, you will need to take your tape is I just tape it around my laptop. It just keeps it in place so that when you're drawing, you don't have the paper sliding around everywhere. So you might want to turn your brightness up. And I recommend turning your laptop like this so that it's kind of flat to work on. And now you just take your pencil and you can just get drawing. I've just adjusted the camera. So I'm hoping you can kind of see what I'm doing. You always just kind of want to start going around the main outline of that person's clothes. So just draw around here. Here. I mean, to be fair, you can do it as detailed as you as you want to because there are five, no, six people in this image. It is a lot more time consuming. And obviously the more people in the image normally, the smaller those people are because you've got to fit six of them in. When I have a kind of a two person one, I might be able to go a bit more detailed. Like I might add the button. I think in this instance, it's gonna be more of a kind of main outline of the girls. So I'm just gonna carry on with that now. So I've now actually drawn the bottom of the image. So once you've done that, because this is bigger, like my screen isn't as big as the paper, you take that off and then you just scroll up to kind of reveal the full image. And then you can just pop, line this up to make sure the drawing's in the right place. And then you can stick it down again. I've now finished tracing the whole shape. When you pull it away, you should be able to see quite quickly what details are missing. So I'm just gonna pop that over and just fill in some of the bits where I think it looks like it needs filling. The whole point of this is to just pin this to the cushion cover and we're gonna sew through it. So it's just a guide to show you where to sew. I think this is looking pretty good now. So you should now be able to see the sketch of the drawing next to the image. So that was the image we were going for and this is the outline we've now got. So when we sew this, we're gonna be using different stitch thicknesses. The thicker stitches will need to go on the outside. You don't want to be putting thicker stitches in the smaller detailed parts because it will just look too much. So we're going to use a zigzag stitch for the outer lines and then for the sort of smaller details like the lines in the hair or the necklaces, we'll use a straight stitch. But I'll show you that later. Now time for step two. Step two is to pin our artwork onto the cushion. Let's do that now. In step two, you'll just need three materials, which are the cushion cover, whichever you choose to use, some pins or some tape, and of course, your drawing. You want to start with your cushion cover on a flat, clear surface and have your drawing to hand. In theory, you could just do this really quickly and plonk it wherever you think's right, but I think it looks best when they are dead on central to the cushion. As this is my business and I want this to be perfect, I am gonna use a ruler or a tape measure just to make sure the drawing really is in the exact center of the cushion. But you don't have to do this, it's just what I do. You can still do it perfectly well without. So, you wanna take your drawing and we now wanna find the center of the drawing to match it up with the center of the cushion cover. What I tend to do is I fold the piece of paper over and kind of match the lines to where like the end of each part of the design is, if that makes sense. So that is the center of that design that way around. And then I have it again, just to get the tops of the feet to the tops of the head. This is just to find the center of the piece of paper, basically. Not the piece of paper, of the design on the piece of paper. 
Hopefully that makes sense. So now this point is the exact centre of the design. Um, so I can see now that hole there is where the centre of the design is. So I'm now going to match up that hole to the centre of my cushion cover. Now you just want to pin it around basically. Try and pin where the drawing isn't there if you can. It doesn't matter if you do it, it just means that when you're sewing it's a bit less fiddly having to take the pins out all the time. And of course you do want to make sure that the drawing's on there straight and it's not at, a, at an angle or anything. So I'm going to go there and I'm just going to pin this. If you did have tape it can be quite useful for this little bit just to stop the paper sliding around whilst you're trying to pin it so i also would recommend if you want to be extra precise to just pop a bit here and there and in fact we can just use the ones the old ones that we used from our tracing you've got to stay hydrated so that's just taped on all you need to do now is take your pins and go around the drawing to kind of secure it in place. It's quite helpful to just have um, these bits of tape in place, as I said. And yeah, I suppose the more pins you put in, but you don't need to go crazy. I always do this. I always, like most of the day, I'm walking around with a pin in my mouth like this. It's important to mention as well that when you're pinning, you want the tracing paper to be as flat as possible. Because if there are bumps in there, you might find that the paper kind of gets distorted a bit. So try and keep it as flat as possible when you pin it. Now that our drawings are pinned correctly onto our cushion cover, the next step is to hoop up our fabric so that it makes it nice and tight and easy to sew. As I mentioned earlier, I'm going to be using this wooden hoop. I recommend when you start sewing, don't try and start in the center. So maybe like the bottom left hand corner and then gradually move over to the right. I find it's easier to work that way instead of jumping from place to place because I think as you'll be sewing, the paper will be falling off. And if you're jumping from place to place, it can be harder to like get the lines in the right place, basically. So start with, if you're using a wooden hoop, you'll want the bit with the screw on the inside of the fabric. And you wanna try and put this facing up with the screw because it just makes it a bit easier to navigate. And then you just wanna press your hoop in. Once your hoop is in, you can kind of turn the cushion inside out, tighten that screw up a bit. You might want to use a screwdriver here just to make it extra tight, but it's, again, it's not really essential. So it should be kind of like a nice little drum. If you hit the back of it, it should have some tension on there. And now we are ready for step four, which is to prep our machine ready to get sewing. Step four is to prepare your machine ready for free motion embroidery. Now, I showed you earlier the different kinds of darning fits you can use for this. I'm going to use my Janome one because I just find it a bit easier to use. But you just need to use a screwdriver or you can use a pair of scissors or something. Just to take um, the foot off that's already on there and unscrew and then you want to put this one onto your machine and then you want to make sure that that is nice and tight you might want to use your screwdriver or scissors again just to make that screw extra tight feed dogs which as i again mentioned earlier we want to put those down now some machines let you do this some don't so mine does mine is just a switch on the back of my machine that i don't know if you'll be able to see it's here yours might be around here somewhere or your machine might not have a switch like this but instead you might have been given a needle plate which um you kind of just put on the top covers your feed dog so you can still move the fabric around smoothly so maybe just check your instruction manual or something like that so as you can see i just switched them back then and the feed dogs have gone up gone under which means that this is now smooth so it's not going to catch on my fabric as i sew part two of this step to get our threads ready i'm going to be using this dark navy blue thread when using any embroidery thread i tend to think that if you're doing a project it's always just best to match your bobbin thread with your top thread that you'll be using i am assuming that everyone watching this video probably already knows how to make a bobbin if you don't then just drop a comment in the comment section and i can do a tutorial on that for you as well get your machine threaded up ideally with the same bobbin thread as the top thread it will just i find it just makes the sewing process way smoother sometimes if you use a different color bobbin thread it can come up when you're sewing to the top side and you don't want to see it so it's always just safer to have both 
the same colour and the same front type if you ask me. I'm going to tidy my space and get my cushion cover and then we are ready to begin sewing. So I'm going to show you what kind of stitch settings and stuff that I would use for this. Obviously again it's dependent on what kind of machine you're using but normally the overlap is pretty similar. So I'm going to start by turning my machine on and when I turn my machine on it's just going to start to a general kind of straight stitch um, and now I kind of look for the number which is my zigzag stitch which is number eight so I need to go to number eight so now it's on a zigzag stitch setting as I mentioned the outer lines we want to be a bit thicker so on my machine I use a 1.5 for these lines I just think it's quite a nice thickness and for the details I will go back to a straight stitch I'm going to try and film to show you what I do as for the distance between the stitches that doesn't matter to change because we're using freehand so it's the machine's not trying to pull the fabric anyway so it doesn't matter about that so just ignore the stitch length all we care about is the number to be a zigzag and for the width to be i use 1.5 but you'll just have to play around with it or what you think looks right i mean you might like every line in the whole design to be the same stitch width i just prefer to have those outer edges a bit wider and then those inner lines a bit thinner um but it's Again, just completely up to preference. So I'm going to start sewing. I'm going to slide my cushion cover under my hoop. Right, so we are set on the zigzag stick. And I'll start with that bit first because you'll probably be able to see it better. You're going to put your foot down using... Normally there's a lever around here. Get your scissors ready. They'll just be quite useful to have right next to you. And we're going to lower the foot down. And you're going to gently start sewing. Um, I'm going to turn my machine speed down for this a bit. Now, you'll see a zigzag stitch forming, and what you want to do is just follow the line, but move the fabric very slowly, so that you're creating just a bold line where the drawing is. Now you can change your stitch width here if you don't like how thick the line is, um, but I tend to stick with the 1.5 just for the outlines of the shape. Turn my speed up again. Okay, so that's one of the legs there, and I'm just going to go back. I'm now just going to show you what you would do to fill in these lines. Here is a line on the drawing that we've put in there to kind of show where the crease on the trousers is to get a perspective. So we're going to go want to go back into that straight stitch again. Right now I'm back in straight stitch mode and I'm going to start filling in just this detailed line. I don't want a bold line for that because it's just a bit of detail to show the perspective. Now I could leave it just one stitch like that but I tend to always go over the things a couple of times for these smaller details it just means you can get a finer stitch when you're doing a straight stitch like this that's kind of how i do things and you kind of gradually just work around the image to fill in the different shapes obviously it's up to you what kind of style you want to go for you might want to do this the whole way around but I just prefer the bolder look. Whilst you're doing this, just remember that free motion embroidery, you're not a machine, it's not going to be completely perfect, but I think that's also the beauty of just handmade things. If you're sewing a tiny area and it doesn't look great in that moment in time, don't worry about it, don't spend too long trying to fix it, because I feel like sometimes if you look at something too long, it can make it look weirder than it actually is. And at the end of the day, once you've got the whole cushion in front of you, you're not going to notice like a tiny mistake. Just try not to spend too long on a tiny area or if you do go wrong just don't worry about it move on to the next area and then at the end you can look at it and if it's really bugging you you can always unpick it or you can go back and just go over it or just it's worth whilst you're sewing to just really try not to overthink that once it's done once it's unpicked by unpicked i mean once the tracing paper's out and once it's all ironed and pressed and looking nice like i promise you it always looks so much better once it's been ironed and everything so just trust the process and i'm sure you'll be really happy with the outcome i'm actually gonna get going now and just sew this i'll try and put a time lapse on so you can see what i'm doing a bit better <laughs> I 
feel like this is stating the obvious, but I did forget to mention that obviously once you've finished in an area, just move the hoop. Don't try and like sew to the closer sides of the hoops because it's just a bit awkward. So yeah, take the hoop out and put it back in. I have just finished sewing around all the drawing. It's about three hours later. Honestly, freehand is really time consuming, especially when there's lots of people in. This is very detailed, but obviously your paper will look a bit like this. And what we need to do now is just go and take the pins out and then start to unpick the tracing paper. You can use your fingers. So if you want to get a bit more precision, you can use tweezers as well, or just like put a pin in there and try and get out any bits that you're struggling to get out. Give it a good rub and we'll move on to the next step after that. So I have now picked out the majority of the tracing paper but I'm just going to go in now and kind of use a straight stitch just to go over some bits that I'm not completely happy with or bits that I feel like need to be a bit bolder and just kind of even it out a bit I guess. I mean you might have done it first time and it looks amazing so that's good too but I'm just going to um, perfect it a little bit. So I just finished kind of evening it out a bit and making it look a bit neater. It's Time to now turn it inside out and just neaten up the back a bit, just cutting the excess threads and things like that. Once it's all trimmed and you feel like it is looking neat and you're happy with the embroidery, it's time to give it an iron. It'll just flatten everything out and it just makes everything look so much better. All right, so now it's all ironed and pressed out. It's now time to put the cushion filling into the cushion, which is the last step really. Um, and then I can show you once it's done. If you have been following along, I really hope you've been enjoying the process. So here we have it. That's the original photo with the final outcome. I'm really happy with how it's turned out. It does take a really long time, especially because there are six people as opposed to uh, one or two. So that's always going to take a bit longer but it's always worth it in the end and I think they make such beautiful gifts. So there we have it. You now know how to make your very own photo cushion with your domestic sewing machine from home. Please give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and please hit the subscribe button for more tutorials like this one. If you had any questions then please drop them in the comments box. If you do end up following this tutorial and you make your own photo cushion then please please tag me in your outcomes. I would love to see them. If you're not already please go and follow my Instagram and TikTok. I'll put links in the description and also feel free to check out my website katescustoms.co.uk. Thanks so much for watching and I will see you in the next video.